Hello everybody. So it's Carla Nicole. I wanted to talk about something that I think is imperative that we talk about. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, Carla Nicole, I'm a wisdom coach. And um, I wanted to talk today about the power of nonverbal communication. Um, in a lot of times in relationships, there comes a point where you have um, communication with your mate without um, using any words, basically. Um, and many, uh, I'm sure, <laughs> understand that you don't have to say a word um, when you're upset or when you're angry, right? So a lot of times we're in relationships and we don't say anything, but by God, we know if our partner, our lover is not happy with us, right? We know when they're upset. Um, and a lot of times they don't say to you verbally, I'm angry with you, I'm upset with you, I'm mad at you, I'm disappointed in you. A lot of times they don't say a word. They show you by their actions, right? Don't we notice that? Um, and men are <laughs> usually experts at knowing when they are so-called in the doghouse or they are so-called... Um, their woman is upset with them because he gets what from her? He gets an ad. She gets an attitude, right? An attitude meaning that she cast off this upset, um, physical, um, almost like a physical aggravation. Her shoulders are up. She's aggravated. She's not talking to you. Her whole attitude changes when she's upset, right? And then also. Uh, nonverbal uh, ways to show that we care about somebody is we kiss, we hug, we embrace. Um, we show affections in different ways to our lover based upon what we do, not necessarily what we say, right? And a lot of times the understanding that you have with your mate and you understand the way they communicate comes from time with them, comes with understanding their mannerisms, comes from understanding their background, comes from understanding um, them conveying to you what it is that they do, um, which helps you to understand their nonverbal communication. They show you they're upset with you. They show you by their ways. They show you different things that helps you to understand, okay, I'm in this particular state um, in our relationship with my mate, because I know that by, based upon how the attitudes are, um, their body language. Hey, what's up, Octavia? The body language. What are they casting off to me that I can tell they're not in good standing with me or they're mad about something or they're upset? What am I, what am I, how do I know that? How do I know that my lover or my mate or my partner or my wife or my man or my husband, how do I know when they are upset without them saying something to me? How do I know that? Well, nonverbal. We don't have to say everything we feel. We don't. Every time we get upset or they get upset with us, it doesn't always require an argument. Sometimes we need to just be quiet, say nothing. Because a lot of times we get angry about things that has to do with something we've had in our past. Sometimes we could get upset about something based upon how old dude treated us. Or sometimes we're upset about how, you know, your ex-girl was acting a fool towards you. And whenever she would do a certain something, then you understood that to mean this. But in your current relationship, that may not be the same communication. You don't know because you haven't taken enough time to spend with your mate to understand oh my lover does this when he's upset my lover does that when he's upset my lover shows me this when he's happy when he's ex excited what's up satori so when you understand their mannerisms their ways of being when you see them in good standing you start to pay attention and you notice okay um he's upset about something i don't even have to talk to him i, I don't have to I don't have to, he doesn't have to say I'm upset about something. I could just read it. Why? Because the power of nonverbal communication is huge in all relationships. We cannot understand them, but we have to pay attention to them. Um, 
prime example, we have a lot of times sat around and thought that we've known something about something and we really don't know for sure. We're just assuming a lot of shit in relationships. We assume we know. Hey, what's up, Raymond? We're assuming we know something because we base it off of what? Historical actions from other lovers, historical actions of other people, friendships. And so through those different interactions and engagements with people, we start to determine that action matches this feeling. That action matches this so-called emotion. That action means this. And so we start to piece together different actions based upon what we think we know. But problem a lot in relationships is we don't spend enough time in the physical with our lover to know those communications. Nonverbal communication is usually 90% of what you do in your relationship. It's not what you say. It's not what you say. Do you know your lover loves you? No, you have no idea. You don't really know unless they show you they love you, right? So how do they show you? What do they do? What do they, what do they really do action-wise to show you they love you? What do they do to show you you matter? What? Only you know that based upon what? Paying attention to their nonverbal communication because that's the real power in love relationships. Even with your children, even with your family, even with your friends, it's not always what they say. A lot of friendships and stuff, we misconstrue what a friend says based upon what we think they mean. But a lot of times it comes from what? Understanding. But then if you don't understand properly, you then go into misunderstandings. And this is why it's important to spend time with your lover. You really don't know someone if you're not spending enough time with them to read them, to understand what their nonverbal communication means. Mind you, perfect example, when you have two best friends, I'm talking about male or female, best friends, and even sometimes you have opposite best friends that are, that are opposite sex, but they're still best friends. They can have full-on conversations with no con with no words coming out of their mouth in a setting, and they can read it without them saying a word. How does that happen? That happens because I'm in tune with you. You're in tune with me. You understand what I'm saying without me saying a word, right? That comes from what? Having understanding of what actions matches that emotion what action matches that feeling in, in, in order for us to understand those things we have to be in contact we have to have engagement a lot of people want to be excited about talking about being engaged right engaged in, in a, getting ready to get married well the engagement is is prime for when you go to the next step right you go to you, you engage first then you go into marriage okay but the engagement comes from me understanding you not just understanding your words but understanding your actions a lot of love falls and dies because of lack of understanding each other there's no understanding i don't understand you that's like being in a relationship with a foreigner that doesn't understand English. And I'm in a love relationship with him. I'm trying to communicate something to him. And he's like, no comprende. I don't know what you mean. Well, that can happen. You can be foreign in your love relationship. Prime example, I know of lovers that have completely different backgrounds on how they relate and show love to each other. I know someone that uh, came from a very... You know, they, they don't touch, they don't hold, they don't embrace, they don't, they don't have that kind of dynamic, and that's where they came from. And then I know someone that's kissy-feely, huggy, touchy, you know what I'm saying? One of my brothers, man, I, I'm real close to to this day, man, he helped me raise my daughter. He's Jewish and stuff, and that man always told me he loved me, always. And it's just like, oh, but not only did he tell me, he showed me, okay? So understanding that, it's like, oh. So that, when you say it, you match it by showing me, by you caring about certain things in my life. 
if I had financial burdens or if I needed a, a male entity to help me with my daughter or I had something going on crazy or I needed something to help me with something, he was there. Without a doubt, right there. Not a love relationship, strictly platonic, but a brother to me. And, and so his words matched his actions, right? So, okay, so that's what that means. So now when we were in different places and in different settings, I could talk to him and not say a word. Everybody else was... They didn't, and unbeknownst to them, they didn't know we were having full-on conversations about what was going on in the room. And it would just be looks like, have a perfect, have a perfect, uh, great relationship with my daughter. She knows my feelings and what I think just by her looking at me across the room. I don't have to say nothing to my daughter. She knows, she can read it. That is key in relationships, especially in love relationships. If you don't understand each other, and I'm talking about really truly understanding where they where they land in their headspace and how they feel based upon what they don't say but what they show you it's key to to basically building the better intimacy i think a lot of times uh, women are very good with just jumping to conclusions right we have a tendency to get an attitude in a minute what is this and who is that and why are you being cool with her and what's this relationship and I ain't know about this one and who's that all of that is attitude we show our lover how to treat us we also show our lover what to show us and sometimes we don't have to say we have an issue with something because they know by our attitude by our body language by how we how we treat them when you start to step back and start thinking, well, wait a minute, maybe I need to, rather than to react to everything I don't like, react to everything that I don't understand with my man or my girl, maybe I should step back and just be like, this is a new knowledge of my lover that I need to learn. Everything doesn't require an argument. <laughs> everything doesn't require for you to have to chastise your mate because he or she is or you don't understand for that matter. So it doesn't require for you to have to get an attitude. But when we get an attitude, we're giving a, a, a education to our lover on how we feel about something. So why do you think men don't tell their lovers that they have a lot of female friends or a lot of females that they're cool with? Why do you think they don't tell their woman at home that? A lot of times they don't tell their woman at home that because she's going to get what? an attitude she's going to treat him different she's going to act different she's going to find her some male friends and okay so this is what we're doing okay so all of those things are what we teach our lover what to show us you show me what you're doing and i'll show you you oh you want to do that okay i'll do it too and and then it just becomes this this back and forth but when you stop and say you know what the more they show me even things that I might not want to see or even things I might not want to hear, or even things, even actions I may not agree with, then it's showing them that they're safe with us to be authentic. The reason why people are so upset about cheating, so upset about deceit, so upset about secrets, right? Your lover keeps secrets from you. Why do you think that happens? Your lover keeps secrets from you because they believe that it's not safe. So if I, if I don't, if I keep you from seeing certain things, if I know that if I hold back this information, we'll have a great rapport with each other. But if you see something that you don't like, and you know that that's going to be an issue, you're going to hold that back. You're going to keep it away from them seeing or revealing that to them. And then that's going to do what? That's what causes the hiding, the deceit, the secrets, the, the the affairs, the love affairs. Hey, Tosh, the the love affairs and all that stuff that's going on behind your back. Why do you think? But why do you think that so much is going on behind your back? It's because it's happening because you are not okay with their authentic self. What's up, Arkin? You're not okay with their authentic self. You're not okay with their truth. You only want to see what you want to see. You don't want to see the truth behind what they got going on. So you hold it back. So they hold it back from you. And then this is how, it, and this is how affairs happen. This is how deceit happens. Because really, we aren't really upset 
really about them putting their penis in another vagina. Are we really? Or are we really upset because they hid it from us? Which is it? If we really want to be real, which is it? Is it that we're upset that they hid it? Or are we upset that they did it? Or both. It could be both. But what I'm saying is, which is it really? Because most people are upset from lies because of the deceit. But again, when we don't say certain things, but we act a certain way because we have an issue with how they're doing certain things, then of course, um, your lover or your significant other or your bae, your boo, whatever, they're going to hold back showing you anything that's going to cause this rift between us two. Most people don't like all that damn arguing. Most people don't like a cold home. Most people love affection and love you and your better, happy yourself. They don't want to be around you being mad all the time. They don't want all that. They don't want to be coming home to the coldest house in on the street because you mad about, oh, you got this friend and oh, who is she? And why is she buying you this? And why is she doing that for you? And girl, really? Who gives a damn? I mean, real talk, who cares? We got to get beyond that and see for ourselves, well, what about myself is 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 enough because when we start to get real judgmental or we start to be all up in them and all up in their face because they're doing something that we don't like that they're doing and we start to tell them without saying a word now tell them to curtail showing us certain things we're teaching them how to lie to us not only are we teaching them how to lie to us, we're teaching them how to not be honest and upfront and be their authentic self to you. The best love affairs that you can possibly be in are the ones that can be the most naked with you, the most honest with you, the most upfront, show you everything, lay it all out on the table. That's what we say. Well, lay it all out on the table. I can't handle it. No, no, you really can't handle it. Lay it all out on the table. Is what we ask our lovers to do and then when and then when they do they get attitude back lip they get uh, cold shoulders they get no more lunches made for them with the little candy inside of it they don't get none of that matter of fact they might even have their uh, palates in them in the living room because they're upset because of something you did and they're mad right so because of that we teach our lovers to be more secretive. We teach our lovers to deceive us without even saying a word. And then love affairs fall short or fall apart because we don't want to really be honest about the fact that we have issues. We don't have to always argue. We don't have to always say, look, you did this and you did that. that shut up. Sometimes we just need to take our time and just process the new knowledge whether it's something you like or not. And don't make it an issue. Just deal with it in your own time. And another thing, you don't have to go and confess and talk to somebody else. Fucking talk to your God, man. Talk to yourself. Take time to deal with what it is instead of trying to have an issue with what's not or how you feel. Sometimes we got to deal with our own feelings on the inside. It does not require for us, if I don't like something that you do, or he, or he doesn't like something I do, it doesn't require for us to argue about it all the time. Sometimes we just need to be cool. Okay, I felt some type of way about this. But why did I feel some type of way? Am I reading it for what it is, or, or am I reading it up against something that I went through in my past? Because a lot of the shit we get upset about don't have a fuck thing to do with the man we with. It has a lot to do with the one that hurt us the, the deepest. I say all the time, the first heartbreak, man, listen, that first cut was the deepest. So there, until you heal those hurts, until you think about, well, I was hurt the most because my ex deceived me, my ex played on me, my ex did all these lies and, and did all this stuff, and I really didn't sit down and give myself enough time to try to heal from that. I just kept on just doing the same thing. And now, my dude I'm with now, I'm spending all this time in his ass about shit that I'm interpreting. Now, this is nonverbal I'm talking about. I'm interpreting his actions to mean this. And it may not be that. You feel what I'm saying? So we're spending a lot of time upset because my ex would do that. And that meant that from him. 
But if I'm not around my man enough, I don't know if that same action means the same thing. I don't know. But it's important that we understand the power of nonverbal communication is huge in love relationships. Huge. We have to be honest. It doesn't require us to sit back and always think that if my man does this, it means that. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. He's not your ex. <laughs> She's not your ex. You're getting attitudes about your man doing this and doing that. And that don't mean anything about what you're thinking it means. You have to start to talk and communicate. When we talk and communicate, we start to establish understanding. Misunderstandings comes from lack of understanding. Isn't it, does that make sense? It just doesn't, it, it doesn't all add up because we only base everything we've been through based upon what the old lovers did, the old hurts, all that shit we didn't deal with, it surfaces. And then we start to understanding, well, oh my God, you do this with this woman and you don't do this with me or you do this with her and you don't do this with her, uh, you do this with him and you don't do that with her. Listen, sometimes we have to say, and I say this to myself a lot, sometimes we have to say, it's not my business. Everything that my man or my girl or my kids do it ain't my business. They don't have a fuck thing to do with me. So why am I feeling some type of way? Why am I adjusting my attitude and my physical being around showing you that I don't, I don't like it? Because you have something you need to deal with with yourself. And the only way you can do that is to be honest with you. And once you become honest with you as a practice to yourself, you have no problem getting naked with that man in front of you. You can be like, listen, baby listen i'm cool with my nakedness do i have stretch marks i had two babies yes baby i do love it or leave it <laughs> you feel what i'm saying we gotta be we gotta be real with the shit at the end of the day we have to sit down and say nah the reality is yeah like octavia said not my business it's not my business and that's fine i don't have to have i don't have to be all on top of what you are doing I just need to know that I'm understanding you accordingly. And, and it takes time. Listen here. It takes time for us to study our lover. We have to take the time to study them. Not just with us, but in other scenarios, in other with other people. How do they act? What do they do? Study. Just like you study your schoolwork, study your lover. It's true. We got to study. How do they act? How do they feel? How do they relate to other people? So I can maybe pick up on some shit. I don't know. Oh, you want him? You want to be his whole world? <laughs> that what you want to do? You want him only around you? Well, guess what? You ain't going to get no education on how he's communicating. If all you see is how he communicates with you, how does he communicate with that boss at work? How does he communicate with his kids? How does he communicate with his mom? How does he communicate with his siblings? How? If I don't know how he communicates with his mom, with his siblings, with anybody else, just me, then I'm going to be highly uh, handicapped with understanding him. Because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so there's going to be a cause of a lot of misunderstandings because he and I are not going to see eye to eye. Our communication is not going to match. We're not going to be on the same frequency. I'm not going to understand him. He's not going to understand me. I might as well fucking be with a man that speaks complete Polish or speaks speaks a whole other damn language that I don't understand and try to make it work and say we're in a relationship. <laughs> it's like you don't understand each other. Not only do you have a language barrier, but you don't even know what their physical uh, demeanors are and mannerisms. You don't know none of that. That's like dropping me into Italy and hooking me up with some Italian men. Now, there are some fine Italian men, I must say. But as an example, I go to Italy and I might think that an Italian man means this to, you know, in the way he's walking and strutting and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's what that means. And that might not mean what, that, what I'm thinking it means. But because of where I come from, that's what I assume that's what that means. Because black men do that. So when they do that, that's what that means. Well, he's Italian. Whole different race, whole different custom, whole different language. And you think you're going to understand them? You're, you, 
when you go into a, a different type of foreign relationship, you have a lot more study and work to do to understanding him. But that still applies even in the black community. We got black men that are different from a different culture. How they were raised. They might not be raised like you. So how are they going to understand you? I'm just saying. Nonverbal communication is very important to learn. We can't always assume that we know our lover because of what he says. But a lot of has to do of how he shows you. And a lot of women, we miss that part. Because we think, you know, he, well, on the soap operas, they say this. And on the soap operas, they say that. Men don't talk like that in real life. Men don't tell you those words like that. Men don't, men don't go getting roses every goddamn day. That's not how men operate. But it takes us to step back and say, well, I need to start getting into involved in learning something about men. Otherwise, I'm, again, handicapped at understanding. I'm just trying to put y'all up on a game with something. I try to always give you something that you can take home and 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 sit on. And, and like I said, share this video, tag your girls, tag your friends, tag your boys, because a lot of people don't understand there's a power in not saying anything and, a, and, and showing some things that we very likely will miss because we're so busy worried about what they didn't say but they showed you a lot that you missed because you're not paying attention. Pay attention to the nonverbal communication. There's a power in it. And once you guys master that powerful nonverbal communication, you'll begin to communicate without even saying a word. And your lover will learn you and will, and, and will come to understand you. And the more we understand each other, the better the relationship is. The more we spend time with someone, the better the relationship becomes. Not because we're just spending time with each other, but we're learning each other how your actions reflect certain emotions. It's key. How does he, oh, he does this when he feels this. He does that when he feels that. He does this when he's, this, when he's in this state of being. When he's upset, he does this. When he's angry, he does this. We learn, right? We, we study our kids like, I mean, we study our kids like uh, we try to get a master's degree in them. Because a child that is going to be deceitful and, and often lie to you, we taught them that. We taught them to lie. Why? Because we don't, whenever they try to show us their truth, we either killed it or, or reprimanded it or, or told them it wasn't right. And so now they hold it back. They don't want to show that now. So they shh. Deceit. One of the be biggest hugest violations in any style relationship you're in fuck mono fuck poly fuck open any relationship you deceit one or another you just you put deceit in any relationship i don't care what dynamic because i'm not the promoter of those i don't i can care less about them <laughs> whatever style is your choice but as far as poison toxin deceit be unrevealing be secretive Hold stuff back. Don't be honest. Don't be authentic. And you'll see. Whatever dynamic of a relationship you're in, it will be destroyed. Because lies and all that deceit, it destroys it every time. Just here to tell you. So make sure you share this video. Make sure you look me up. Go on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. It's Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. I need, I need lots of subscriptions on there, please, and thank you. Make sure when you subscribe, you put in here in this chat, I subscribe, so I know you subscribe, and then you're, you're saying you're loving me. Maybe I need that today. I need somebody to say they love me. But not only say it, show me. Show me you love me. How about that? All right, guys, I'm out of here. Remember what I said. Learn nonverbal communication is very powerful it is one of the major things that we miss in love relationships because we don't realize that most of the verbal conversation is very small maybe 10 percent but the nonverbal is the biggest part how are we showing our lover we love each other how are we t showing our lover we care it's not always by what we're saying out of our mouth it's what we don't say trust me you could take that to the bank and cash it. Remember what I said, guys. You are a flame. So get lit and stay lit. This is Carla Nicole.
I'm signing off. Best kit. Bye, guys.